Welcome to the ProBrick exclusive YouTube channel with Reverend Dr. Jason W. Morrison, Theologist, New South Wales, Australia. Intimate conscientiousness, something that we fail to really apply. And we misread the person that we're with. Um, it can also be um, intimate neglect. In, uh, psychological intimate neglect. We're not prepared to use the mental muscle to navigate our relationship in a way in which it's going to grow and flourish. The simple basic arts of um, performing in your relationship in a way in which you want it to build. Just in the medium here, this is a place called Gosford where they've allowed the Aboriginals to make this spectacular park. Oh, it's a, they've put this monument in for the Aboriginals with stone fish and turtles and, and these symbols. In the background there, just by coincidence, is the moon. It's interesting, isn't it? Back to the video. See, Life, as I said in the first video, has got a way of taking things from us. Physically, mentally and emotionally. That's not a, everybody's intention for that to happen. But <clears throat> if you, we're not prepared to make the effort in the right areas of our lives, if we want to be neglectful, psychological and emotional neglect, then we're going to pay. And we're going to pay in the areas that are important to us in the areas of our relationships and in the areas of love we're just going to pay that's all there is to it it's just how it works fallen human nature has got a way of dealing with itself without mercy particularly in somebody else if somebody else is letting you down you say, no, that doesn't happen to me. Well, why have you had to split up with people? Because they've pushed your tolerance to the point where you'd had enough. Simple as that. And the best decision for you to make was to remove yourself from the negligence, psychological, could be assault, could be abuse, emotional violence, through negligence, via a habit, alcohol abuse, some kind of aggravation coming out of their behaviours and neglects of themselves and the relationship um, and you've gone no more that's called boundaries <clears throat> now some people break up with people hoping that they're going to change but that's not a strong enough motive for people to change in fact that's foolish because if you break up with somebody and they um, don't change, then you've sabotaged um, the whole relationship. Other people want to go to counsellors and therapists and coaches. That doesn't always work either. And they're, hello. And therefore they end up with unnecessary judgments that need not have been there. These things, if you're prepared, to put in the personal, mental and emotional work, educate yourself and gain knowledge. You've got to be spiritual as well, because you've got to read the unseen part of a person's life. You're just looking at the shell. You're only seeing the shell, my shell in this picture, right? You don't, you, I said, say to my girlfriend, make sure you know what you're doing because by nature I want things to grow and if anything gets in the way of that through poor performance or um, through nodding off psychologically in the relationship it will be brought to attention and I expect the same I always say and I expect the same that's how you keep a relationship intact. 
Now some people are up for this and other people don't care. Let the people that don't care go. Walk away. There's no excitement in having a compass that's broken. The needles are still pointing in directions, but they're not pointing the way in the direction that they should. That's a lot of people these days. They just don't want to make the effort to end up in the right place in their life. Mentally, emotionally, spiritually, or physically. And so they lose touch with themselves and touch with the person they're in relationship with. Now, just because you're with somebody doesn't automatically mean they know how to navigate themselves. They can turn up, do all the physical stuff, and then go back to their life and be no better for it. They can waste it. A vampire that sucks blood and doesn't know how to use it may as well be toothless. Do you understand what I mean? Um, they're wasting your time. Your blood, your strength and power that you're sharing with the person that you're with needs to be used to its optimum for the benefit of that person. If they're squandering that, coming and getting their fill, and they're not using it for the benefit of their life, that's not a wise person. And I use the picture of Samson and the way in which Delilah was coming and using him. You see, sex is a great manipulative tool. And if you're um, untrained in the arts of intimacy and sex, you could end up anywhere because that's where um, you can be deceived. Deceived by the lust. The Bible talks about in Ephesians, deceived by lust. Lust will deceive. It'll deceive you. It'll trick you. That's how it works. And people get into relationships, they get deceived by lust. They don't know how to navigate themselves. And if you're a psychopath, you understand the mind. You can watch these people and you, you know they're not, they're, they are not navigating this relationship. They're just showing up. And so you can... <laughs> Have you seen Silence of the Lambs and the, um, Anthony, Hop Hop yeah, Anthony Hopkins plays the part of Lecter? doctor, a highly intelligent man, and he could see inside the mind of people. He wanted to see beyond the surface, and for centuries and millenniums people haven't been doing this. They're just going in, able to see, but blind completely blind and then dealing with the consequences later I'm trying to teach you that you can have a healthy happy fulfilled relationship without drugs and without fucking alcohol and all these demonic um, fuels and that they just fuel lust right you can tap into your deepest desires and um, most powerful dopamine supplies without alcohol and drugs you know what I mean God's created the experience to be there through intimacy unadulterated intimacy because once you start trying to add to God's chemical um, arrangement, good luck with that. The majority of it never works. Add to that ignorance in the arts of intimate navigation 
and you've got a cocktail for disaster. People end up in mental homes. They commit themselves to these dysfunctional people and the next thing, it's just not working. It's just not right. There's no harmony or energy working in the area of um, evolution for the relationship and the next thing you've got people that are frustrated, unhappy, um, not being listened to, in some cases being ignored, abused and let me just say one of the greatest weapons and be be aware of this that an immature person pathologically immature person selfish person will use on you is the is the weapon of silence and you need to be trained psychologically trained in how this works because silence is one of the most powerful weapons anybody can use against you that you're connected to if you don't know the weapon of silence, stonewall, silence, you are going to be psychologically maimed, at least manipulated in some form of damage. You'll be manipulated into some kind of psychological trauma, psychological damage. Art, the art of knowing the dark triad um, means of destroying people covertly through psychological assaults and psychological violence. If you're not making the effort to understand what these are, I can promise you so most of your um, trauma that's been caused to you has been through ignorance of not wanting to know what they are and falling prey to these and let me say to these fallen human nature traits because fallen human nature doesn't need training it doesn't need to have an attachment style it doesn't need to have a label it's innately potently evil and that's why I turned to the Bible I wanted to understand what evil was doing to me from inside from the inside I wanted to understand how it was affecting me and I also wanted to stand, understand where I was using it to harm people subconsciously the subconscious use of the fallen nature or the fallen nature subconsciously using you it'll use you it's a whole realm within you of its own built on evil a lot of people don't know themselves that's why when good people do bad for whatever reason you can put all these psychological labels on them but if you really want to grind it down right wear it down to what it really is it's fallen human nature which is innately potently evil evil, evil in the highest order that's what it is evil in the highest order You don't need clinical names for that. The problem with that is pride. If you come straight back to the biblical principle of dealing with evil, by way of discernment and through the cross of Christ and the rest of it, there goes half the therapy movement out the window straight away. All the tablets and medications that are being used to try and fix um, inherent 
fallen nature evil that can't be fixed. It has to be navigated. That's the thing. You can't give someone a tablet for their fallen human nature. That's not going to work. You have to understand the conscientious spiritual arts through Christ Jesus. I'm starting to sound a little bit religious now, but I'm not. The conscientious Christian arts of overcoming the sinful nature. And the sinful nature cannot be fixed with tablets and medications and dope and alcohol. And once you understand how that works against you and the people that you love, you've got at least some hope. Intimate conscientiousness starts with ourselves. Once we've got ourselves right, then we can navigate the evil that's trying to screw us over. Please listen to me. And the key, the key, is that sinful human nature cannot be told. You can numb it, you can medicate people, but you will not stop the potency of the inherent sinful human nature because it's a part of that person. It's an innate part of that person. There's nothing you can do about it except bring it to the cross. Lay it at the cross where it was abolished. It was abolished at the cross, done with, done away with. And that takes humility. To think that a broken, chopped up, crucified human, made to equal nothing, is the answer to your problem. We don't want to kneel before somebody that's been brutalised and crucified. No, we'd rather kneel to our drugs. We'd not rather kneel to our alcohol. We'd rather kneel to our sex, fueled by drugs and alcohol. We'd rather yield to our unresolved. We'd rather yield to the um, manipulation and infantile behaviour of our children. I don't care what anybody says. Go to the graveyard. Everything comes back to the cross. And if you know anything about Pitcairn Island, even they knew that. Some of the most degenerate people that have walked the planet. Even the Pitcairn Islanders knew that Christianity was the only way that was going to save them from their depravity. And Pitcairn Island's one of the remote, remote, most remote islands and depraved um, inhabitants of human record there is. But they still knew one thing, that Christianity was the answer. It's not going to stop evil coming at you but it's going to give you an intimate conscientiousness of yourself and of the person with you, that you're with in a way in which you can work out where your relationship's going to end up. Through awareness of yourself and the other person, conscientiousness to try and resolve, and the courage to decide whether it's worth excuse me, continuing or not, because people push for things that just aren't meant to happen. If it's meant to happen, navigate it. If it's not, walk away. That's the power of it all. The power to go, this is right and stay, or the power to go, this ain't happening, and being unselfish 
for the person that you're with and um, valuing yourself to, enough to say I need to walk away hopefully it's the first but if somebody's not cooperating you, with you primarily in the area of resolve and power I would suggest that probably the best option for you would be to walk away this is Reverend Dr. Jason W. Morrison on the Pro Bricky Exclusive Channel. Bye.